Hey guys, Woody here with Express Screen. Today, I'm just gonna be taking y'all through some of our different framing options for the QS2536 and uh, different frame sizes that are gonna work for it. That's uh, before I start getting into the frames I got here, I'm gonna start off with uh, a little info on the maximum and minimum frame sizes with the QS2536. So the maximum frame size, it's actually in the name, 25 inches by 36. So this was uh, designed and built to be able to be used on automatic presses, which is a big deal for a lot of people. So uh, these, these work great on auto presses, simulated process, uh, spot coloring, one color, two color jobs, whatever you're doing, the 2536 is gonna be great for it. And uh, in terms of minimum size, it's gonna be about 22 inches by 12. So that's 22 inches across here. And the reason you need that 22 inches is the thermal print head down here is 18 inches long. So you need about an extra inch and a half of mesh on either side of there just to make sure you're getting even pressure from that coming across your screen. So uh, that's pretty much the main issue with getting uh, the width there. It has to be longer than that 18 inch print head. You can't have that going over across the, uh, the side of a frame. It's, uh, it's not gonna work for you. And uh, another thing with the 2536, even if your image is only being burned from about here to here, the 2536 is gonna go all the way down your screen and then come all the way back before, expo before uh, it's finished exposing. And so that process takes approximately 90 seconds. Obviously it's gonna depend on the size of frame you've got in there, but 90 seconds is a good starting place for that. So now that we got that done, we'll uh, get into the actual different kinds of frames we have. Uh, first off, this is our screen door frame. It's got these little channels in here that you uh, use this roller tool to lock these uh, little silicone uh, strands into, and that'll uh, hold your mesh and give you some nice tension. So I'm gonna show you how that works. And uh, this frame is about uh, 20 by 23 inches. Uh, we have a larger one here that's about 22 by 30. So you got a couple options there in terms of size. So I'll go ahead and stretch this so you can see what I'm saying. This is a roll over my screen mesh. Uh, this is the uh, size mesh or uh, the size roll they come in. It's about 54.7 yards long and 22 inches wide. And so all I'm gonna do here, place that down and then just use this roller tool to roll it in and lock in that little strand right in the middle there. And this is uh, this is just the first one is basically just to hold it in place. And then I'll do a second one that will uh, give me some extra tension once I've got it across, uh, once I've got my first one in all these sides. So now that I've got that locked in, Gonna use these scissors to cut my roll of mesh here. And now I need to stretch it onto here, which uh, again, just a little one of these little gasket things here. That where you need it and then just roll it on in. And like I said, you're gonna do this on all four sides and then go back a second time with a, uh, another gasket on all four sides and that's gonna really give you that extra tension that you're looking for. You got that side locked in, now it's time for the long ones. And again, quick and easy, just roll that in, make sure you're getting that deep enough so that you've got space for the uh, second one coming later. One more and then I am ready for my second set. And I always like to kind of try and uh, Pull this on the outside and make sure I got that uh, mesh staying up over the gasket. And 
so as you can see there, we got the uh, beginning of it being stretched, still not as much tension as I would like. So we're gonna come in a second time. And that's gonna really help to tighten that screen up. And as you can see, rolling this in, it's a, it's a pretty easy process. There's not much to it. slip there but it's fine not gonna hurt anything with this little plastic roller and there we go you got a tighter screen now it's more ready to uh got some higher tension there once i put those second ones in so that's how you stretch with the uh with the uh, screen door frames and one another thing i'm not sure if i mentioned this at the beginning but uh always keep the shiny side up our mesh has that special uh pet coating on it that's heat sensitive, which is what uh, actually works to expose it. And so there's one side that's gonna be really smooth, really shiny, and then the other side is gonna feel like mesh pretty much. And so make sure you got that shiny side, uh, the smooth side facing upward, and uh, you'll be good to go. So that's it for the uh, screen door frames. These are the most used frames with the QS2536, they're screw frames. And so they've got these channels right here. Once you uh, lock these, lock the mesh in with these D-bars I got right here, you're gonna use this drill and uh, just pull those channels back with that and that's gonna give you your tension. I'll show you how that works here. And these frames come in three different sizes. This is our uh, 2123. Right here we've got our 22 by 31. And then we've also got the 25 by 36 frame, the uh, largest frame the QS 2536 can take. So you got a lot of options there. And I'll uh, show you how these stretch. Again, uh, first things first, make sure you've got all your channels pushed all the way to the inside. Take your mesh, shiny side up and then just start going around and locking in these D-bars. I always like to start at the ends here just cause that's uh, gonna make it easier on me cutting my mesh. So now that I've got those two uh, sides locked in, I'm good to go ahead and cut here. There we go. And so just like that, I got all three of my bars locked in. Now I can go ahead and start stretching it. As you can see, there's not really very much tension on there right now. But that's gonna, you're going to see that change really quickly as I start to screw these in. And when I do this, I always start with the middle screw, move to the outsides, and then if I feel like it needs it again, I'll tap that uh, center screw one more time just to make sure we're all tight there. Going around to the other side, and y'all should start seeing this. Uh, I'm not sure if... My video quality is going to be quite good enough, but you should be seeing these uh, creases on the outsides and everything start to go away as I'm stretching this out. Get the sides.
just like that, you're good to go. I could potentially even get this tighter if I wanted it. And uh, that's the other great thing about these frames. If you're doing a simulated process, something like that, where you want to make sure all your tensions are the same, it's real easy to adjust the tension on these things. Just uh, screw it in, unscrew it, whatever you need to do to get them all to the same tension that you're looking for. So then the uh, third framing option that we have here is just your uh, basic, typical, traditional frames. So these are uh, pretty much what people use uh, to screen print traditionally. Uh, in order to use these, you would want to uh, use a new workhorse pneumatic stretcher. I'm not going to go into that in detail right now, but at the end of this video, if you're watching on YouTube, we will have, there should be a little screen that pops up in the bottom corner, and that'll direct you to our workhorse stretching video. I got another larger one right here. This is about a 2536, about the same size as the largest one that you can put on there. And uh, there's thermal paper on here. Uh, just a quick little note, thermal paper is a great way to uh, test exposure and make sure everything looks how you want it to without having to expose on mesh. Uh, thermal print head, thermal paper, so it's, uh, that's how this is exposed in there. So it makes, uh, it makes it easy to make sure that you're getting the right image and uh, you're getting everything exactly how you want it before actually moving on to the mesh. So those are just some of our framing options for the QS2536. Uh, they all work great, like I was saying. These are the most used frames that we get with the 2536 and the 200. Uh, they're just really easy to stretch, really easy to use. So definitely uh, let us know what y'all think in the comments section. And uh, hopefully if you don't have them already, hopefully we can get you set up on a QS2536 soon. Y'all have a good one.